Okay guys, um, we've now reached the portion of this particular episode that I like to call question time. Um, since my last podcast, I've received a couple of questions from my viewers, uh, which by the way, I very much I very much rather appreciate, and um, I would certainly look forward to more of them, so keep them coming. Um, my first question comes from an, in an individual with the screen name, OMG, that's totally awesome. And um, this person asks um, what I think about the um, new touchscreen devices of various types that exist out there now in the world. You know, as many of you know, touchscreens are becoming more and more uh, a sort of a staple of everyday technological life. And obviously these are, are, you don't have the actual buttons there available to you, you know, tactile buttons that you can feel. You know, and so you're working under a purely vis uh, visual uh, uh, interface. And so naturally a lot of people would, would assume that that would present a problem for people who are blind and visually impaired, at least for, for many of them, uh, who can't see those kinds of screens very well. And in fact it does. Um, however, some companies such as Apple, whom I applaud, uh, have um, designed uh, special uh, adaptive technologies to work with those touch screens. Uh, Apple has, has uh, put what's called voiceover into uh, various versions of their iPods as well as their iPhones. And basically what voiceover does is whenever one moves one's finger across a touch screen, uh, that voiceover will read what one's finger is touching. And so therefore, uh, just like with my, uh, just like with this cell phone that I demonstrated a couple episodes ago, uh, the, um, the iPhones and the uh, the um, iPods in question would speak as I was moving my finger across the screen as opposed to speaking just what's on the screen when I press buttons as is the case with this phone. Um, I have in fact uh, looked at an iPod Nano that has the um, the voiceover on it. Now obviously that doesn't have a touch screen and so you know I've just you know so the, but that's about the closest I've come to working with a product like that. I have seen a number of times uh, touchscreen iPods and iPhones demonstrated, and and they look like they're they're pretty nifty, and they look like something that I could work with fairly easily. I think it might take some getting used to again because the, you don't have any tactile, you know, real tactile reference points like buttons on this. Um, but you know, I think um, I think with some practice, you know, I would uh, become used to it and, and get quicker at it. Um, in fact, I'm actually considering purchasing an iPod Touch. Uh, fairly soon uh, with the with the voiceover on it, the talking software on it. So um, I hope I answered your question. Uh, if you have a follow-up or if anyone has follow-ups to their questions, uh, just uh, post them in the comment section of my videos and I will uh, I will respond there. Um, the uh, next question that I received comes from uh, an individual with the screen name uh, 30,000 feet and um, he asks um, for me to describe exactly what I can see. He notes that I am partially sighted, and yes, that's the case. I do have some vision. And so he wants to know, just in very basic terms uh, that anyone can understand, what exactly I can see. Well, that's a very difficult question, and it can't be answered in a few simple sentences. Um, what I can see very much depends on the environment in which I find myself. Uh, if I'm in an environment that's very simple, has very few, or has very little clutter, and there's good lighting, uh, and a lot of high contrast in in the environment, uh, then I can pretty well come into that environment and navigate it independently. Uh, even perhaps without the cane, which I, I you know I usually use a cane, a white cane, uh, because most environments are, to me anyway, are simply not like that. But again, if the environment's optimal in the ways I just described for my visual acuity, um, then I, I could you know, theoretically navigate it without a cane and just through my, with my vision. Now again, like I said, most environments are not like that, and so I'll generally use a white cane to navigate, or I'll use sighted guide, or I will, if I'm going to frequent a particular environment, I will um, memorize how, how that environment is laid out ahead of time so that I can quickly and efficiently navigate it in the future. Um, in terms of what kind of print I can read and such, um, 
I usually use about uh, five times magnification on a, on a standard computer screen, just to give you an idea. Uh, so if you blow up your standard print on your computer screen about five times, that'll, that'll show you what I can read. Um, <clears throat> As I mentioned in uh, the earlier portion of this episode, I also read um, uh, white text on a black background more easily than I do black text on a white background. Usually, the, for me, the text has to be lighter, the background has to be darker. It doesn't necessarily have to be white on black, but there just has to be that particular setup and contrast for me to be able to read with, with uh, little eye strain and to read most efficiently. And again, you saw that earlier when I was demonstrating my... Uh, my CCTV. Um, so I hope that, well actually I was going to add uh, before I conclude this, um, that I do know how to read Braille. Now normally I will use large print most of the time and secondarily I use audio like audio books and recorded materials and such uh, and that, that I usually use just for purposes of reading quickly because again, as I demonstrated earlier, my, I read pretty slowly just because my visual field is limited. Um, I do use Braille, however, if large print or um, audio is not available. Um, you know, again, being partially sighted, I'm kind of in between being able to easily read printed material and, you know, audio and Braille material. So um, I, I do know Braille as well. And I, actually, I didn't learn it, though, from the beginning. I learned it... Uh, Oh goodness, it's been about uh, two, 10 years or so ago now when I started learning Braille, just because I had some uh, other eye issues come up and uh, I wanted to make sure you know, that, that I knew Braille in case my vision was to, was to diminish, which I mean it, it has, but very gradually, and it's going to continue to diminish, but uh, again, I have the Braille that I can use if I'm going you know, if I'm going to have to rely on it in the future, I, I do know it. Um, I try to practice it every once in a while, but I probably don't practice it as much as I should. Uh, you know, because I mean, obviously, if you don't practice, you lose it, and so uh, you know, I try to keep that up if I can. So I hope that answers your question as well. Again, follow-ups, post them on the comments here on YouTube to to, to my videos, and I'll I'll respond in the comments to them. Uh, thanks again for your questions, guys. And uh, again, I look forward to uh, to hearing from you uh, in the future. Hope you enjoyed this. Uh, this particular episode of Through My Eyes, and I look forward to talking with you soon. Good day.